only thing I know about is my life, that's why I write it down I can spit about something else, but where'd that leave me now? In a prison of my own design, slave to things unseen I just read or heard about or lived it out in my dreams, that ain't me I'm here to talk about the things that I see. First of all, I just want to say that I am nine months pregnant So if I seem a little extra tired or bloated, I could drop my baby right now during this interview so I just wanted to give that disclaimer first and foremost. People are like, she looks different. Who is that? It's Eternia. And um, yeah, so first album in 11 years, um, which is a big deal. We worked on this record for three years. We had a lot of stops and starts and um, challenges along the way. Um, initially, it was a project with one producer. got switched to another producer like a year in. COVID hit. I got pregnant after we got the grant to do the album had a baby, got pregnant again. Like this is all within the time span of doing the record. So there's been a lot of hurdles just to be like, yo, like you can get this done. You have to get this done. And honestly, if I didn't have a grant, like I just, I like to be a person of my word. And like, if I say I'm gonna do something, do it. So if it wasn't for that, um, it would have been so easy to throw in the towel. But I'm really glad I didn't. Uh, Ralph McCoy produced this entire album. So it's kind of, it is an MC producer project similar to Eternia and Moss at last. And, um, it felt really good to release. It felt like a personal triumph. It's definitely a different world out there now in terms of marketing and promotion. So I was so used to one thing 10, 11 years ago with that last, this is very different. So I hope the people are checking it out and hearing it. I know that if they do, um, the feedback has been resoundingly, like I've heard a lot of this is your best project yet. Like this is, I, I, I mean, I'm just saying objective feedback, not my own thoughts. Um, yeah, so we have Mr. Lip on it, of course, who is my husband. He's on two tracks. Rel spits on it as well. He's an MC. Um, his vocals are on it. Phoenix Pagliacci from Toronto, originally like from the sorority and trippy. Uh, Wordsworth, who of course has graced a number of my projects. It's almost like a ritual now to have Wordsworth on one of my projects. Um, I know I'm missing some, who am I missing? My boy Manny does just some to audio talking, but that's like my brother. It was really beautiful to have him do that. Sheil and Shad. Sheil is this new singer songwriter just dropping some music now, new music out of Toronto. She's incredible. And um, and she sets off the entire record. Her voice is the first voice you hear. And Shad, of course, everyone knows Shad. So so yeah, I think that's everyone. It's it's a it's I'm proud of it. I mean, I covered it a bit. It's so funny. It's called Life, my debut album in 2005. There was this, there was this track called Two Worlds. And it was sounded like I was talking about two lovers. Um, actually, it wasn't even called Two Worlds. That was the original title. And then we renamed it Balance. And it sounds like I'm talking about two lovers. But really, I was talking about Canada and the United States. And so I've had this relationship between them both. Very emotional, very personal, not just a geographical thing. Since I was a teenager, a young teenager. And... Um, and I spent almost a decade in New York City, moved back home in 2013, didn't think I'd ever come back, and here I am married and I'm back in the States. Um, but I still have a place uh, back home in Toronto as well. Uh, my safety blanket, my security net, my, <laughs> you know, my free healthcare. Um, so, so yeah, I think it's one of those things where as an artist, you're creative in all aspects of your life. It's not just making music and so, you learn to do things creatively. It's been a bit live life creatively. I always spoke to Liv about like living life outside of the box. We both were very passionate about speaking about how do we live life outside of the box, off the grid, outside the box, you know, kind of create or cultivate this life that is what we not only dream of, but like it doesn't have to be what people say, oh, well, you just got to do this or you just got to do that. Um, so, for example, like self-imposed artist residencies. We don't have to be accepted to an artist residency to create an artist residency for ourselves in another country for three months or or what have you. So these are like our dreams and our goals. And we have done a bit of, of it to the point where it's like, okay, I'm kind of tired of bouncing around, um, especially when you have children. So I'm looking forward to being in one place longer. Um, but yeah, it's it's... It's, I'll tell you this, it's very divine timing when it comes to where I am and when. Because even with COVID, I felt like when it was really bad in the States, I was in Canada. And then when it was really bad in Toronto, I was in Rhode Island where the numbers were lower than Toronto. And then like, it's just been really divine in terms of I am where I need to be when I need to be there. And so it's a lot of just being intuitive and listening to the spirit as well. I can't tell you where to be seen. I can tell you how to have fun without a dollar or a nomination. I've been doing that for years post-domination. Someone that I've always wanted to collaborate with that I haven't yet is Brother Ali. 
and we've spoken about it. We've I've sent tracks. He's been like, yo, I'm down. I'm just busy at this exact moment, and I'm not one to bug. But I I I think. Um, I'm all about yo. If it's meant to be, it'll be. Like I'm not really one to like push stuff, but Brother Ali is somebody that I think, um, not only sonically but also just what we stand for. I, I don't know. I think it'd be a good matchup. Listen, you know what uh, in terms of what does the future hold, will I tour again? I I I never say never to anything. I miss the stage. I don't miss doing it every single night. So I think. When you have two small children, I'm about to have my second. Um, when you're in a different age bracket, like you start to think about things differently. Like I love how Shad on his last album, he just dropped another one, but before his um, the short story about a war, that album, he was doing tours like every weekend. He had just had a baby just when the album dropped, new baby, and so he would go out like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, come back, go out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, come back, and I just thought that was brilliant. I was like, yeah, that's the way to do it, and so. Both Liff and I have talked about, hey, like if we created our own self artist, like self imposed artist residency in Europe, for example, and we stayed in England and could do spot dates, like we, you know, go out every weekend and do a show or two if there was interest, or we could even do a residency somewhere where like we're at the same spot, like almost like Vegas but cooler. Um, so, so these are the kind of things that we think about if the opportunities were to arise, and and I don't know is the demand there. I guess you'd have to go to where the demand is, but um, but both of us love this stage, and I think we're really strong on stage. I think we'd be strong together on stage, uh, which is why I mentioned my partner in life because wherever we are, we're going to be doing it together. Um, but um, but yeah, I miss the stage, but I think it would be a, a different, a different. They would look different now. What is it like being an artist and having children and trying to create or just be living a creative life? It was a huge adjustment for me. Um, I didn't know, I knew it was going to be hard work, but I didn't know the adjustment that it would take just in my mindset. Like it was like, it wasn't the physical work that was hard. It was just, I lived 20 years or more than 20 years of just doing kind of what I want, when I want to. Like even as an artist, it's not that I never worked full-time jobs, but oftentimes I didn't. Or if I did, it wasn't a job that took all of me. It was a job that didn't take much of me so I could be creative. Like I always designed my life where being creative and being flexible um, were just kind of just readily there. Uh, and also taking for granted what is around you that feeds your creativity. So whether you live in New York City or Toronto and you walk out your door and boom, there's like a street festival or there's some live music that's free or there's this or there's that going on. You take it, you take for granted all these things, the people that you hang out with. I always created in a, I didn't create in a bubble. I always used to create with like, if not crews, at least like a group of people that were all kind of feeding me um, creative energy. So all of that stuff, like hard stuff, the minute I had my first child in 2019. So it's been a struggle. Uh, COVID was hard for a lot of people because they were isolated. I felt isolated a year before COVID. I almost didn't notice when COVID first hit because I already was barely leaving the house except to go to the grocery store or go to the park with my son. So COVID at first, I was just like, this is just the life I've been living already. Like, you know what I mean? Um, uh, not, not visiting a lot of people, not seeing a lot of people, not going to arts uh, events or shows not supporting the community and the culture, not being plugged in the community. So these are some things that I experienced after having a child. And I know it changes and, and you adapt and and it, and it grows you. But um, to answer your question, I don't know if I've mastered yet. I feel like it's so interesting that this album sounds so cohesive, being that it was like pieced together in little moments of, you know, having no child around like uh, in different states and different countries and different studios and different setups. It was just so pieced together, piecemeal. Um, so it's kind of a miracle that it has this sonic cohesiveness to it. But um, I haven't figured it out. Mr. Liff and I have this show called Mr. Liff and Eternia on Instagram. And one thing we do um, when we were doing it weekly, we now do it once a month, but we interview creative couples is what we call them. And we try to find people with kids, but even without kids is fine too. And we ask them these questions. We're like, so how do you do it? And so uh, we're, we're just out there trying to figure it out as we go. Well, I want to shout out Fusicology. I have always looked to y'all for like, what's popping? I'm out of the loop. Like when I've been out of the loop, like I just have always been like, 
I've always been a fan of the information that you provide and, and, and not only that, but the taste that you have, like the tastemaker kind of side of things um, as to who you shine light on and the kind of music you, you support. So, so shout out Fusicology for real. Um, and in, in other than that, you know, my manager, Sav, our publicist for this record, Matt Diamond of Diamond Media and Coal Mine Records, Fat Beats, who did not have to pick me up again 11 years later, and they picked me up again and they gave me all the resources that they gave me 11 years ago, uh, which is beautiful. Um, those are some people off the top of my head. And, and I have to shout out my husband because everything I do is because, I, you know, you need someone to spot you with a child. Like anytime I'm here, just even speaking to you is because either he's paying for daycare, he's got my our son. So, um, so I wouldn't be able to do anything that I'm doing now if it wasn't for having a teammate, a good teammate, a good partner. So, Freddie, I think I'm in love. She's like, he's like, yo, me too. You got to remember, this is before social media as we know it. It was message boards and the radio, and that was it.